Uh, last week, I spoke to Edward Norton, um, who uh, is appearing opposite Jeremy, Jeremy Renner in The Bourne Legacy, and here's a clip. We need to talk. We need you to stop what you're doing and turn around. That's an order. We got screwed on the intel, okay? Nobody knew those people were in there. It would be perfectly normal for a person to have doubts about the morality of what we just asked you to do. Is that a question, sir? No, it's not. Tune into what I'm trying to say to you. Do you know what a sin eater is? Well, that's what we are. We are the sin eaters. It means that we take the moral excrement that we find in this equation and we bury it down deep inside of us so that the rest of our cause can stay pure. That is the job. We are morally indefensible and absolutely necessary. You understand? Well, we're delighted to be joined by one of the stars of The Bourne Legacy, uh, Edward Norton. Nice to meet you. You too, man. Now, uh, who do you play in this? Because there's no Bourne, there's no Matt Damon... Yeah, here I am talking to you. Who do you play in this movie? The story just keeps sort of unfolding right from the tail end of the last film. In fact, the, the beginning of this film, the, the characters are watching the end of the last film take place. I would put it sort of almost in the tradition of really great uh, novels. or You know, it's sort of book two in a way, uh, and, and it, it kind of widens out and, and you get introduced to this whole n matrix of characters who who have actually been watching the whole thing from one level higher. My character is essentially a per someone that you realize has been orchestrating multiple programs in the same vein yeah. and, and suddenly is forced to grapple with the, with the consequences of everything that you see in the last Bourne film. Yeah, because I mean, I, I mean, I've just seen the film. Right. I, there's, there's a, the lot, will you describe your character and Aaron Cross, who's the, who's the, 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 the super yeah. agent, so to speak, as sin eaters. Now, that's an expression I don't know that we use too much in, in the UK. No, I don't even, I think it comes from Greek mythology. It's, it, you know, Tony Gilroy, our director and writer, he, I think it's, it's I can't remember which of the, the Greek um, plays it comes yeah. from, but where the, the idea that in the myth there's someone who can take on the sin for the rest of the yeah, community. Yeah, and digest it and carry yeah. it with them. Because you, you describe your, I mean, this line really stuck with me. Morally reprehensible, absolutely necessary. Right. Is the things, I mean, is that a typecasting thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think, I think it's what I, you know, Tony doesn't really, um, th there's no villain in this in the sense of like somebody who's rubbing their hands with glee and trying to take over the world. You know, there's no yeah. more, there's no Moriarty kind of enjoying his wickedness. Yeah. The people in this are all very, very stressed about the things that they're being forced to do. Yeah. Um, and I think in that sense, you know, not not to it. It's it's absolutely still kind of the 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 thrilling chase kind of a story. But but I do think that um, a lot of what we see out there going on, you know, in the world with predator drones shooting people in cars in Yemen, yeah. and and we 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 know somehow that there's there's choices being made that are right up against the line of what we're supposed to allow for in. Well, that's exactly countries. what I was... I, I mean, that's what really struck me, is this is a drone warfare era movie, isn't it? Yeah. There's drones in it. You've got people in places making decisions. It's, it's an Obama's Death List film, in a yeah, way, Yeah, very, very much so. And I think that this idea that we're using our fear of what's out there in the world to justify doing things that might themselves be... A, a total violation of all the things we're, we claim to stand for. national security, the yeah. trump card that, that uh, excuses Ju that justifies everything. justifies all. Yeah. And I think, um, and on top of that, I think if there's, some, if there's a color in this one that I liked a lot that I think is somewhat new is that Tony's kind of pushed it out a little wider than just the, the intelligence military matrix, and he started to include, like, the pharmaceutical companies and the and the medical research yeah. and 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 almost say like who's running who you know is it corporations who are running the governments or vice versa who's who's really calling the shots and i think that you know i like i think tony tony if you look at his movies like michael clayton and stuff like that i think he's all of his movies are sort of have this suggestion that it, that we're about three steps away from being enslaved <laughs> and, and i think and i think that um <laughs> and I think maybe he's right, you know, maybe we should be really worried about, like, the corporations taking over the world. It's unashamedly a born, it's a born thriller. Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. But, but with all these other layers on top, and as if, as you peel the onion, you get, you get more. 
Yeah. He's not just an agent off reservation. He's a, he's a sort of super soldier, isn't he? In, in, in yeah, I, and I think this this notion that we're um, you know we're running research programs and Tony had a brick of he had a brick of files on all these things that have come out of the Freedom of Inf- Information mm-hmm. Act about about the things that the government has done across the 70s and 80s and 90s that are now starting to come out in terms of you know trying to figure out how to make soldiers go longer without sleep and yeah. how to um, condition them mentally for having less compassion and uh, the, all these things that have been really going on yeah. and he's having a lot of fun with all that. Hey, I mean, I recently read a book of, written in the 80s by, by an American military medical psychologist who, who was going on about how in the 80s this research had gone too far and they right. were going to create a whole army of psychopaths and right. and was it right to defend freedom with these people if the, you know they they've got no understanding of what the cost of what they're doing is right. so these are, they, obviously these issues of to, that they now turn up in a mainstream hollywood films yeah. really interesting if you look at the spectrum of things like you know on the you, you have like mission impossible yeah. on on the completely fantastical end of you know almost what i would call a, just fantasy yeah. that's just co- comic book fantasy almost then the Bond films, which maybe are even these tougher, grittier ones, are a little bit tongue-in-cheek, and they're still using gadgetry that's yeah. maybe you know about <laughs> eight, eight feet above reality. Yeah. And then the, I think the Bourne films have always been the ones that that people liked because of their kind of gritty yeah. sense of that you're peeking behind the curtain on the way these things actually yeah. work. I mean, it's telephones and pet pills and yeah, and uh, whatever and, else they're giving him in this. And film. yeah, and and you know, and guys in ties standing behind people at contr- drone controls somewhere in a in a in a warehouse somewhere. You know what I mean? And I think. There's a creepiness to how banal some of it is. There's, yeah. a, there's a creepiness to how a lot of it's done at a distance. That part of the film really struck me, actually, and, and felt incredibly relevant. I mean, having seen those pictures from the White House, yeah. of them watching... Uh, exactly, the, yeah, that, that photograph of all of them sitting in a very, you know, boring-looking room, yeah. um, not very high-tech, looking at screens with these frozen faces. And but To change tack slightly, a thing we like to do on the programme is, is ask what... If you were curating an evening of Edward Norton films. Ooh. What would the five of an Ed Norton-a-thon, so to speak, what would, the, what would they be? You don't have to watch them. I mean, you don't, you, you don't have to Good. come. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I just got twice as enthusiastic about this project. <laughs> of course, there's, there's, sometimes there's those films that, that I really like that, for reasons having to do with the business of the film business, maybe got a smaller release. You know, I, I yeah. think... Um, we made a film a few years ago called Leaves of Grass that, that I thought was really uh, well directed by this guy and, and it just got a small release so not as many people saw it. Um, actually, Jeremy Renner and I both worked with this director named David Jacobson um, and Jeremy did a film with him called Dahmer right. uh, and I, oh, did this, yeah. I did this film called Down in the Valley right. and both of, us, both of us are always saying, like, that guy's a genius. He's a, he's a really underappreciated filmmaker so i might throw down in the valley in okay there. that's I think, two i think death to smoochie may, okay. maybe is my right. other sleeper uh favorite um we can come back if you yeah if we maybe, come back to so this three three out of fives I, you actually a better answer than we get from most, yeah. <laughs> most people we ask yeah i i like i like the ones that maybe you know of course there's the ones that people that do get put into film festivals yeah. so they, they get their thing one time i went to um i went to china and uh i went to the shanghai film festival and they were running a um they were running a series of of films I had done, right. and I could see they put a Chinese, they put a, a whole sentence in Chinese over it, and I said, you know, what what is that? And they said, oh, that's the title of your film series, and and I said, what's the theme? What what is it? And they said it means um, the search for the spiritual center of the new youth generation. <laughs> And I was like, oh. I was like, all right, I'll take that's, that. That's pretty good. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> they were. I was like, is is that what you think Fight Club is? They were like, yes, clearly, it's the, <laughs> it's the search for the spiritual center of the new youth generation. <laughs> the one last thing I wanted to ask you about is, um, you, and it really fascinates me from reading your notes and stuff, is you're very private. I'm not interested in in your private life, but why? What you, you've said in before, it's to do with wanting to be a blank canvas as an actor or something, or to keep audiences away from you so that the portrayals are... I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I, I answered your question, but that no, really interests me. Yeah, I mean, I think... I'm not knocking anybody, but I, I mean, I'm sure we all have that experience sometimes where, I don't know, sometimes you just... If someone's just showing up all the time, I, I have a harder time buying into them as 
you know, this versus, you know, you just yeah. start going, this is just the same. And also if you've seen them in a, in a magazine with their kids. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, I, there, I, right? yeah, yeah. And it just, uh, and, you know, I had an experience, like, uh, I, I don't know if you, a couple of years ago there was that film, it won the, it won the Oscar for Best Foreign Film. It was a German film called The Lives of Others. Yeah. I mean, I, like, to, I thought that film was like a masterpiece. Incredible. It was a brilliant, brilliant film. But the thing was, I found myself just getting so caught up in those performances because I had no idea who these people were. You know, these amazing German actors. Like, it reminded me how great acting can be when, you, when you're not polluted with with prior knowledge. Yeah. Uh, did you see that um, French film, uh, The Prophet? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was the same with that. Yeah. You know, this, this Algerian French actor, like, I'm watching this film, but, and I was like, this is, this is like The Godfather. This is like one of the best gangster films I've ever seen, and, 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 the, and the, every face in it was so alien to me, and yeah. the, the voice, you know, it was all, it has this, uh, it just grips you in a, a way that I think, um, when you become too familiar with certain actors and i and i admire i i also find myself i had you know daniel day lewis or people like that who have the discipline to stay um stay away to stay away a bit work less you there's something very special now the listeners have, have uh, asked lots of questions on facebook on our facebook page um and i mean we come back to fight club and the, yeah hit it well josh we'll... miles says well hit it is the question really did you really hit brad pitt in the f first fight scene in Fight Club. Is this a true story? Did you... Um, it, actually, that one is... Uh, many aren't, but that one is because... We had worked out that in that very first awkward punch that... We had worked out that it just looked better if I gave him sort of some sort of a sloppy hit. And we had sort of worked out that on the, the side away from the camera that I could hit Brad in, yeah. in his shoulder muscle or so, in his... You know, and, and that it would... It, it would be fine. So we kind of practiced that a few times and we got it. And then Fincher came up to me and said, just tag him in the ear a little bit with your thumb. You know, and yeah. so, so I kind of did that. I kind of wicked awkwardly past and I, I caught him in the ear a little harder than I intended to right. with my thumb. And that, that's why he, he was expecting to get hit in the shoulder. And that's in the film, he, he, he says, oh, why the ear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's real. Yeah, and it hurt. It, 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 so it's, it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. We, we, it was one of those ones where we watched it back and we knew that there was time to stop because it wasn't going to get better than that. So. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much. Josh, you are correct. Other than that, <laughs> not a correct. single thing on IMDb is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you very much, yeah, Ed, for okay, giving sure. us time Pleasure. to talk to you. Thanks.